and welcome to Lithuania. Uh, could you present yourself a little bit, just shortly names and what you do, because maybe our viewers will not know every single each of you. Um, I'm Tom. Um, I am the tour manager, so it's my job to make sure um, that everything's organized and we get on stage on time and we stick to schedule and stuff like that. Um, so yeah. I'm Ellie and I um, sing in the band and I also, um, at home, I'm a photographer as well, so I take photos. Hi, I'm Martin and I try and sing <laughs> <laughs> from the front um, over to ribs. Hey, I'm Ruben and I play drums. I'm Kevin and yeah, I try and play keyboards. <laughs> <laughs> How's that going on? Trying to. Well, we'll see you tonight. <laughs> He's a genius. He's a genius. Yeah. yeah. He's a genius. So, I know you have been asked this many times before, but once again, how did you meet? How did you form this uh, this 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 new new band? Well, we live on the south coast of England in a city called Brighton, and some of us are in the same church there, but we're all kind of in that area, and. Uh, maybe from one or two churches so we but we've known each other for a while and uh, it's just been great over the last two or three years we've been playing more together and doing events like this and it's amazing but by the way we're just like so happy to be here mm -hmm. this is amazing seeing all the people filling up in there and being a part of an event like this is incredible well we're very happy to have you here <laughs> obviously and could you maybe share some fun moments or, I don't know, just memories while being on tours? <laughs> Rubes. <laughs> India. <laughs> oh, um, I don't know. What, like a funny memory? Or just <laughs> no memory. <laughs> well, where, where, where are some of the places we've played? So, oh man, we've... Yeah, had the privilege to kind of travel sort of worldwide and play um, all kinds of events, but probably a few highlights the last couple of years are uh, we went to India um, and kind of toured around a few places in India and that was amazing. Um, the Hillsong Conference in Sydney, um, that was a real highlight, and Singapore, um, yeah. They're probably, yeah, three big highlights for me personally. But, yeah, anyone else? Hans? I don't, I don't know if there's Did anything funny. Dubai, we went to Dubai um, last month, which was really great. Completely different culture to like what we're yeah. used to, so it was quite interesting, like, um, kind of worshipping with that community. Um, but the team are great. We've got Everyone's quite funny, so we just <laughs> laugh quite a lot. Yeah, fun. <laughs> um, it's never really a dull moment. So yeah. Uh, you mentioned you were in Dubai. Uh, Dubai is quite Muslim, if I remember correctly. How how was it like to perform to to worship to to God in front of of Muslim culture mostly? Well, we were invited by a church there, a Christian church, that's run by some friends of ours. And there were probably about three or four hundred there, but um, so it's all quite underground. Um, but uh, it was a great experience, and those churches are growing in Dubai, and so it's great to see that. You have performed in front of 1.2 million people in the World Youth Days, if I'm not mistaken. Well, yeah, that that is true. I think it was for the, the yeah, like you say, the World Youth Day, wasn't it, for the Pope? Uh, in Cologne, was it? I think so. Yeah, that's quite a few years <laughs> ago. But it sounds very glamorous. But uh, we were uh, we were on after the Pope had spoken, uh. and and we were there to actually disperse the crowd peacefully, <laughs> rather than everyone leaving at once. So it wasn't as glamorous as it sounded. But it was a lot of people though. And while performing, is there a difference in the way you you feel? on the stage when you perform in front of, again, 1.2 million people and in Dubai when you're performing with, in underground with just a few hundred people? Well, 
we um, we really like everything that we do, and every different thing that we go to is so unique. So, you know, like we say, you can be playing to 300 people in Dubai, but it's a small church, but people that are really on fire for God, and there's a great electricity in the room, and that can be as exciting as doing the big. The big things, you know. Sometimes the big things are so big that you can't connect with people. And uh, but in a small space, you can. But we enjoy all of the different things that we do, mm. and it's great for us to do a real mix of things, and we love it. And uh, talking about performances, um, you're one of the most collaborating Christian singers. If I'm not mistaken, right? Wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> but, Wikipedia said that. <laughs> but is there any particular reason why you choose to work with so many different songwriters? Um, I just like hanging out with people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's more enjoyable, isn't it, to have someone over for the day and you can have lunch with them. <laughs> 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 rather than sitting on your own. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, could you maybe share some moments of uh, from working with, um, for example, Bon Jovi or Brian Adams and, uh, I don't know, just tours uh, like that? Wow, this is going back, isn't it? <laughs> You've done your homework. <laughs> um, Wow, what do I say? Well, of course, this was in the days when we were in the band Delirious and I was in that band and we really wanted to not just play within the church but we wanted our music to touch people outside the church and so we did do a few of these crazy tours where we, uh, you know, we supported for Bon Jovi and Brian Adams and, and it was a great experience, very good, good learning curve watching people that are so good at what they do um, so I learned a lot from that but um, <laughs> this is Brian Adams <laughs> everything I do <laughs> no. uh, but anyway yeah it was great great fun and um, uh, I don't know what the question was but it was a great experience <laughs> Well, the question maybe you could share a little bit, like like uh, we read on the, our homework that uh, that you had a quite amazing story with Bon Jovi and flying helicopters, and yeah, maybe you could share it a little bit. This is like um, so much research developing <laughs> into like a showbiz <laughs> film film, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. We we were at a wedding the day of one of the Bon Jovi shows which we couldn't get out, it was actually my sister's wedding. So we devised a plan, and that was that we could go to the wedding, get in a helicopter and go to the show, and then we could then do the show, get in the helicopter and come back for the reception. But the problem is, is the helicopter broke down on the way. And uh, so that plan went a bit wrong. We made the show, but we were late. Biggest uh, moment of our lives, and we were 20 minutes late. <laughs> so uh, we ended up arriving in transit, police transit vans instead. But uh, anyway, that was good fun. <laughs> How did you, other people, members, you felt when you were invited to, to work with, with Martin? How was your experience, personal? And maybe especially the daughter's experience singing with the father. It's, it's, yeah. it's quite amazing. Yeah. Privileged to be asked to be part of the band. <laughs> um, Big privilege. I've <laughs> always worked up this moment. Um, no, it is great though. It's such an honour um, to sing uh, and be part of this team because they are really, they are really great. And Dad is a leader. Um, is is amazing and his vision for things. It's great to be behind someone who has great vision. So I think. For me, it's yeah, it's great hanging out with your dad as well as working. Yeah. Do you feel like some special connection um, while worshiping together with uh, your dad, especially? <laughs> I don't think so. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, funny. I don't know. We just, I think we sometimes just at the moment just catch each other's eye and like, what are we doing? And then like go back to it. Um, 
great. Um, well, I, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I sort of grew up, um, obviously listening to Delirious, going to gigs, and um, that was a big part of sort of my childhood. Uh, my uncle was actually in the band, so I, I knew the guys quite well. Um, and yeah, it's just, it is a crazy journey to kind of, you know, think, oh, I'd, I'd like to play drums, and then kind of where that takes you, and then, before, you know, you feel like you kind of blink and you're on stage with, with Martin and the guys, and um, yeah, it's just, it's a real privilege and honour, and um, I think what's, what's the most amazing thing about it is, as you kind of journey with it, you you start to have kind of a bit more influence, and you grow into, um, you know, I guess the person that, that God wants you to be more. And when you're in an environment that Martin creates, which is very creative, very um, releasing, um, you're able to do that. So so that's been that's been really really great. Best to get. Kevin. Yeah, well, this is actually like this is my first proper gig. Yeah. And it's in, in arena, it's a thousand. So, um, <laughs> Kevin yeah. does arenas. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's an honor. You know, I'm I'm from Canada, um, but, so I grew up listening uh, to Delirious and I'd seen them live. And, yeah, I mean, I don't want to embarrass myself or Martin, but Martin, <laughs> definitely, I definitely looked up to him. And I, I can say Martin's the kind of guy that um, when you meet him, he's sort of everything and more that you hope he would be somebody that you look up to and you realize that he's actually even better in person than, than I thought. And he's, uh, he's very kind and he's very generous and he's really releasing. He encourages us to, to go for it. Um, and, and to really bring what we have to the table. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's amazing, and it's um, it's a dream come true. I was saying to somebody the other day, I said, I've kind of got to find a bigger dream. Cause <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing to thousands of people in the yeah. arena. I was like, yeah. oh, it just doesn't um, it doesn't get any <laughs> no, better. So it's <laughs> so, good. Yeah. so good. good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I love being a part of the team. As Ellie said, it's like a really fun. Um, team to be around it feels very light when we're on the road we're all really good friends we get along well um, and that's really important when you're traveling around to different places Um, but I think for me the main thing that I really love is being a part of something that is like way bigger than yourself so I'm not a musical I don't play anything I'm not really I can't do anything like that but to be able to like play my part into almost enabling everything to happen and having boring conversations via email and Skype and endless hours of planning and then finally seeing the guys like on stage and people encountering God, it makes it really worth it. So I just love the fact that we can do that as a team and um, see people's lives changed along the way and also have fun. It's amazing. <laughs> it's really like a massive honor. Yeah. And I actually wanted to ask and uh, people, how did, you, how did you felt the first time when you went with Martin on the stage, but for you, this first time. And <laughs> <laughs> well, I did it sort of one, one other time in Ireland, and I, but I also go to church. We go to the same church, and Martin will often lead at that, so I have done that. But yeah, it was, it's a little bit, you know, anytime you look up to somebody, it's a bit nerve-wracking, but <laughs> he's, um, right. again, you know, Martin, he's very down-to-earth. And uh, he sort of puts you at ease just with who he is. Um, so yeah, no, it's um, yeah, it's good. Like I said, he's very releasing and very kind, so that makes it easy, easier. Let's let's talk about something else then. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about the football or something. <laughs> is it your? This is your first time in Lithuania, it if is. I'm not. It is, yeah. And uh, how uh, we should have asked this in the, in the beginning, but how do you feel here? What's the first impressions when you see this country? Well, it's it's so green, isn't it? It's it's a beautiful place. Um, Whoa! Well, <laughs> Sorry. Come on. Someone's <laughs> getting excited in there. Um, Watching football. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We. Um, I think we love this part of Europe, and uh, you know, countries like Latvia and Slovakia, Slovenia. Hungary we go to a lot and it's a really amazing part of the world and you sense that people are hungry 
for more of God because you know there's not there's been you know a level of oppression here over the years I think where people have had to fight for their faith you always get more passion and I think this is going to be amazing tonight and, I, and we are really humbled to be here we, don't, we wouldn't normally say that but we are I think we sense that something great is going to happen tonight definitely and these tours and these concerts and these uh, worships uh, do you feel any all of you maybe is there some something uh, different uh, do you feel like the culture change in your worship in the people who are worshiping with you I feel like from not um, from not being on stage and being in the crowd I feel like there's always um, this tension of kind of uh, like resistance but also like breakthrough and throughout the night it, it can it can it can be like this a lot and we find that you know some sometimes the guys will come off stage and they'll be like oh that was really it felt tough it felt like we had to really fight for it tonight or something like that and I think it's those kind of moments that make it really worth it they're the really significant moments because you know when there when there's resistance there has to be breakthrough and you know that God's doing things in people's lives whether that's uh, healing or God bringing freedom and releasing people from fear and and you see that on people's faces as well throughout the night mm -hmm. maybe something changes in in something so simple like their eyes when they're walking out or or something just really small changes that might not seem significant to you know an everyday person but when you like see it through the lens of um, yeah you you're coming to a place and then you're leaving you kind of notice that maybe small things change and I think that's that's something that's cool when we when we travel mm -hmm. How about others? Do you notice any difference or, I don't know, Martin, you have the most experience. <laughs> well, I think, sadly, you know, as you travel, where there's wealth, there's the least passion. And so then the opposite is true, you know, where, where there's poverty in a nation or genuine poverty, then generally you find the church the strongest because it has to fight for everything mm. Mm. and so yeah we you know we've been to Colombia and places like that India Cambodia you know and it's you sense that that where people have hardship that God is everything mm. um, and yet you know it's not always like that in the United Kingdom or in, in America you know that um, where we might complain if our coffee's cold, you know, and it's shameful, you know, but that's just the way society is, isn't it? And we know that in the uh, year 2009 you founded Compassion Art Charity. So where did that idea come from and what does it mean to you? Well, I travelled to India a few times and was really touched by like the extreme poverty there, like not just people without an Xbox or clothes, or, you know, like extreme poverty. No running water, no medicine, no health care. So I think we, we were really moved and my wife and I were moved by that. So we didn't really know what we were doing, but all we knew was that we had friends in a similar position and we got together, wrote some songs and then the copyrights of those songs were owned by the charity and then they received the, the, the royalties, income from those royalties. And it's not millions of dollars but it's raised a few thousand dollars and, and hopefully helped some people around the world, different projects. Um, so that's been really good. And why do you think uh, this, this poverty question, where, where there's a wealth, people uh, distance themselves from God and when there's poverty they really put God in the center of their life why do you think w what's the reason for that well if you've um, you know if you've had an accident and you know you've or your heart is failing um, but you can't get to a hospital because you live in the middle of Uganda um, then you really need to pray. 
you know, but we can just get in a taxi and just go to a hospital and get it fixed straight away. And maybe even forget to pray, you know, because there's a it's an instant fix there and that's all part of God's prosperity and all that you know that there's this culture and society that God prospers and blesses and you have hospitals and brilliant that's all good but um, I think without that you would definitely get on your knees more wouldn't you and what helps all of all of you uh, when you see these thousands and thousands of people who worship together with you we, the people that you lead into the worship, into this meeting with God, what helps all of you to keep Christ in the center and not put yourself very high and humble yourself? We have this guy on the road that plays bass and he makes us laugh <laughs> the whole time and that reminds us of how stupid we all are. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> Well, I think I think we all know that um, you know we all love love music, but at the end of the day, if if the Holy Spirit and God don't show up, then it's just a bunch of noise. You know, maybe nice noise, but at the end of the day, I think that's the thing, and we know that we can play the very best that we can, but if God doesn't show up, then it, it doesn't really matter. You know. Hmm. That's the thing I think that's at the center, isn't it? That we're mm. we're all just desperately hoping that God will show up because we know we, we can't we can't change someone's life. We can't we can't heal a broken heart, but but God can. Hmm. If you would just have one sentence or one phrase or one thought to to give to these young people that they could uh, take with them home, what it would be? Well, I'll, I'll start with that. And I think it's really simple that God is alive and that, you know, and if you believe that to be true, then everything changes. And um, I hope people, you know, will leave tonight just having a bit more faith that, that God's not angry with them, that he's, he's a good dad. You know, and, and, and I think... Um, you, you would hope that a generation grows up with that sense, you know, of that we're loved by God and, you know, he, he has a lot of grace for us. I'd probably say um, remind them that our God reigns over it all and that um, in this world there's so much fear and anxiety and depression and um, hopelessness, but actually, above all, that our God reigns. And, um, you know, in this generation, there's so much um, brokenness. Like, even like myself and in our generation, like, everyone is looking left, right, and center for, you know, where to go or what to look like and who to be. And um, I would probably just say, yeah, that God is bigger than it all and that He loves us just the way we are. Yeah, I think. Um like I've been really struck over the last few days um, ab about what I've been thinking about the, the fact that God is like closer than we know that he like I would love all these guys who are coming tonight to know that God is always close that even if they feel like he's distant or far away or not engaging in them I would love them to know that he's always there he'll always be there for them and that he's going to guide them into amazing things um, yeah I'd say go for your dreams, 100%, um, and just say that like God knows exactly what that is, and also what you'll end up doing, even if it's not that initial kind of dream, and actually, like, even what to you would feel like a tiny little step, like if you're a musician, just getting a guitar lesson, or what looks like a tiny step to you at, like God sees it and he's like um, he loves the fact that you're engaging in what you love um, and he'll use that so yeah just go for your dreams awesome um, I think just sort of to jump on to what Ruben had 
you said, which is, I think if God has put something on, on your heart, to just be persistent with it. Because so many, so many people out there who we all kind of look up to when we're younger, we, we always think that, oh, they must have had it easy the, the whole way. But as we find out their story, we know that they had a lot of uh, trials and, and troubles, but we learn that they just, God put it on their heart and they, they kept going. And um, so, yeah, I just really encourage people to, to keep going because, you know, it can be tough, but it usually is that success for the people who, who mm. push through. The truth will set you free. What does it mean to you personally? Well, it, it says that Jesus is full of grace and truth. And I think that the two together are really important. Um, and, you know, you can't, no one's really got the whole truth, you know. Um, but we, we find our connection with God through grace. And, and he reveals his truth to us through the scriptures, um, which is amazing, you know. That's like our daily, like mirror you know or it's a daily snapshot of who God is and so it's really important to to be in in the word of God you know because it's it's just without it we just forget the stories um, and I think that and we're all the same you know we spend time on Instagram Facebook just trying to search for like someone to love us <laughs> you know or someone to just think we're great but it, it's very hollow, really. And, you know, you only find true contentment in God, don't you? So I, I think that's going to be a challenge for us, this generation. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, then thank you. We will not hold you anymore. Good. And thank you very much for joining and thank being you. here in Lithuania. It's a really privilege, and we're very happy to have yeah. you here. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much.